Let's talk about prepaid expenses. As accountants, we recognize expenses when we use up the value of something, which may differ from when we pay for it in cash. We call this accrual basis accounting instead of cash basis accounting. To refresh your memory on accrued and deferred expenses, we recommend you check out our video on this topic before continuing. Oh good, you're back. So because our expenses don't always match the flow of cash, we can have three different scenarios. Number one, we can record an expense before we pay for it in cash. For example, we hire a lawyer to give us some legal advice, and after the meeting, he sends us a $500 bill in the mail. These are known as accrued expenses. Number two, we could pay cash and record our expense on the same date. That is, there's no mismatch between when we record the expense and when cash is transferred. And lastly, we may pay in cash before we record our expense. These are known as deferred expenses, and prepaid expenses fall into this category. That's the topic that we're going to be unpacking today. Is a prepaid expense exactly? Well, prepaid expenses are a type of asset that arises when a company spends money in advance for a good or service it'll receive in the future. Let's take rent for example. If I pay $1,000 in rent for the month of April on April 1st, I have yet to use up any of the value of this rent. I still have a full month to enjoy that weird smell coming from the air conditioner. The most confusing thing about prepaid expenses is that they're not really expenses at all. They're assets. When a company pays for something in cash before it uses up its value, it's really exchanging cash for the promise of receiving some kind of value in the future. It swaps one asset, cash, for another asset, this future value or service, such as one month of living in a shoebox apartment in downtown Vancouver. We debit our assets rather than our expenses, because the company will receive future value in exchange for this cash. That is, its value hasn't been used up yet. Three common types of prepaid expenses are insurance, rent, and supplies. Let's go through an example of each so we can explain how to account for prepaid expenses. Suppose a bubble tea company called Tranquility buys a $10,000 year-long insurance policy for their drink machines on January 1st. First, let's ask ourselves, what is the value that the company receives from this transaction? The company is paying for protection from risk. It's not paying $10,000 in exchange for an insurance payout, since the drink machines may or may not actually break down. Instead, they're paying for the assurance that they won't have to deal with any sudden and unexpected expenses. Second, has the company used up the value of this service? Not yet. The value of this risk protection is spread evenly over the entire year of insurance coverage, even though we're paying for all $10,000 on January 1st. So we haven't used up any of this value on the day we buy the insurance policy. Thus, this future value of one year of risk protection is an asset that we'll record as prepaid insurance expense. On January 1st, Tranquility will debit prepaid insurance expense for $10,000 and credit cash for $10,000. As the company uses up the value of prepaid expense, their BOBA accountants will move it from their assets to their expenses. If the company's year end is on December 31st, they'll have used up the entire value of the one-year insurance policy by the company's year-end. So on December 31st, Tranquility will make an adjusting entry to remove the $10,000 prepaid expense from their assets and record a $10,000 debit to insurance expense, since they used up the $10,000 worth of insurance during the period. Notice that in this example, we made an adjusting entry to record insurance expense on December 31st. But in reality, Tranquility uses up a little bit of the value of this insurance policy every day of the policy. In fact, every minute. So wouldn't it be more accurate to record daily journal entries adjusting for this expense? Maybe, but that would be far more effort than it's worth. Instead, we make these adjusting entries at the end of the company's fiscal period before we release our financial statements to stakeholders, monthly, quarterly, and annually, so that we match the expense to the proper period. Let's look at a similar example with rent. Tranquility doesn't record rent expense for their shop when they hand over the cash to their landlord at the start of the month. Instead, they'll recognize rent expense evenly over the period where they use the rental space. Suppose Tranquility pays $24,000 for a year's worth of rent on September 1st. The value the company receives is the ability to use the rental space over the next 12 months. The company hasn't used up any of this value yet, so it'll debit its prepaid rent expense and credit cash for $24,000. 
They debit prepaid rent expense because this rental space is an asset to the company, which they've paid to enjoy for the next 12 months. Recall that Tranquility's year-end is on December 31st. Before they release their annual financial statements at the end of the year, the BOEB accountants must make an adjusting entry to record the amount of prepaid rent the company has used up up to this point. They originally paid for 12 months of rent, and used up 4 months of rent from September 1st to December 31st. Thus, Tranquility has used up 4 twelfths, or a third, of the entire prepaid rent expense asset. So they should remove one third of the value of our prepaid rent expense asset and transfer it to rent expense. They'll debit rent expense for $8,000, or 24,000 times one third, and credit their prepaid rent expense asset for $8,000. The company still has eight months worth of prepaid rent left in its assets, or $16,000, since this value has not yet been used up. The trick with adjusting for prepaid expenses that have been partially used up is to figure out what percentage of the total value has been used. That is, how far into an insurance policy or rent agreement we are divided by its total length, and then multiply this percentage by the original cost of the prepaid expense. You may encounter practice questions that try and trick you by not giving you the original cost or the total length, so take the time to understand each question, and don't just plug in numbers like I do in my tax forms. Oof. Let's look at one last example involving supplies, which are another form of prepaid expense. Luckily, we don't have to deal with the confusion of having the word expenses in the name of this asset. Suppose Tranquility buys $4,000 worth of supplies for their head office, like pens, paper, and of course, jelly beans. No, no, no. They are not just ordinary jelly beans, little girl. What is the value Tranquility receives in exchange for cash? It gets materials that its employees will use to accomplish their tasks around the office. Has the company used up this value yet? No. The value from buying these supplies will be used up over time as its employees go through the supplies, as the stacks of paper dwindle, the pens run dry, and all but the black jelly beans mysteriously disappear every time Jim walks by the reception desk. We want to record an expense once these supplies are used up. They could choose to be super precise, Every time someone takes a pencil or another sheet of paper, we record it in the accounting system, crediting supplies and debiting supplies expense for the value of a pen or a jelly bean. But that seems both irritating and pointless. Instead, at the end of the period, they'll simply expense the supplies that have been used up. It's common for companies to do a year-end count of how many supplies are still left in the supply closet. Suppose, at the end of the period, the company finds that it has one quarter of the supplies left, this means that they must have used up three quarters of the supplies during the period. So Tranquility should record supplies expense of three quarters times 4,000, which is $3,000, as they used up $3,000 worth of supplies during the period. That's like over 200,000 jelly beans. Since the company no longer has these supplies, they must reflect that decrease in assets by crediting supplies for $3,000. In this way, they can match the $3,000 supplies expense to the period where they actually used up these supplies, rather than when they paid cash. Tranquility still has $1,000 worth of supplies left in its asset account to use in future periods. Let's recap. It turns out that prepaid expenses aren't really expenses at all. They're assets that represent future value the company has paid for, but not yet received or used up, like rent, insurance, and supplies. Rent and insurance policies, which are time-based, are often partially used up during the period. We need to keep track of what percentage of these prepaid expenses have been used up so that we can transfer this amount from our prepaid expense assets to our expenses to record the value that was used up during the period. If you like this video, please show your support by leaving us a like, comment, and subscribing to our channel so that we know to continue making videos unpacking these business concepts. Thanks for watching! Exchanging cash? Okay.